Natasha and welcome to my channel. Today is Thursday, I believe. I've lost track of the days. I think it is October the 4th. It's Thursday. Uh, it is 4, 54 degrees outside today. Cool for us here in Texas. So we had a little rain come in last night, some thunder, cold air come in. Feels, feels nice. I woke up um, extra early this morning, um, heading off to Corpus Christi. Oh, sorry about the camera, you guys. Um, I don't have a, a place to put this camera on so that it's steady in my car. And I've already done one of these uh, car, you know, like traveling vlogs uh, before, and I know it was not that the best quality. Uh, I'm just gonna do a, a, a try to update up. This is my. My second attempt at uh, recording something without getting uh, long-winded and emotional. But uh, some of y'all may know that uh, my father has uh, been having uh, some uh, uh, some problems, some health problems. My father has um, uh, heart failure is what he has. And um, at this point they're calling it severe heart failure. He's had uh, issues with uh, two of his valves. One of one of them mainly uh, is with a uh, heart failure. The heart is uh, swollen. Oh my gosh! I'm sorry about I'm sorry about the bumpiness, you guys. Please forgive me. I just want to get this get through this. Uh, the heart is swollen, so it pulls on one of the uh, valves. So it pulls it open like that because it's so swollen. It just stretches it. So the valve is supposed to close, open, close, open, close, open. It's fluid slowly goes through uh, but because it's pulled open it doesn't close completely so it doesn't shut down the fluid going through so that fluid is constantly going through whether it's a gush or just a slow pour gush but it's constantly just so his body's not able to you know process it you know the kidneys aren't able to process it quickly enough so he's also having some problems with his kidneys now uh, two months ago or so I don't even remember anymore you guys please forgive me uh, my father went into San Antonio Hospital because they were going to do a correction of that valve uh, they decided to only work on one other valve that uh, was a little close a little bit too close and it wasn't processing fluid through there so they thought that if you know they could clear that one maybe that would give the other valve some release some of the pressure on it and it did but then he was supposed to go back in a month which he did he went back in a month so that they, they could look at him and see how he's doing okay forgive me about that you guys had to fix my camera a little bit it was a little the road's getting really bumpy and i'm really sorry that if uh um you can't hear me uh, very well um like i said this is the second time that i do one of these little video things but i really just wanted to catch you all up so anyway i was saying that you know, we had taken him to San Antonio and then he had a follow-up to see uh, how he was doing. So then they would schedule the second valve surgery, which is going to be the even more riskier one. So we'd be going, doing that, but he'd also, we had gone back home, uh, you know, a few days after he had ended up being in the hospital because of that fluid retention. So they took care of that, care of that at home in our, in our city. We didn't have to come all the way to San Antonio. But then when we went for that, came for that follow-up, he was swollen again. So then they kept him in San Antonio. So then he was there in San Antonio for another two weeks, you guys. Then we came home for two weeks. And then he ended up in the hospital again, but in Harlingen. But not, not that long. He wasn't in there that very long. Uh, you know, for very long. And uh, they gave him some blood also because he also is very anemic. So uh, they had to give him like, I think they had to do like five bags. I'm, I'm probably off sequence as to what I'm saying when things happened. Please forgive me. I don't know. I don't recall now anymore when things happened. But these are the things that have been happening. And then we came again to San Antonio for the another look at him and make sure sure that this time they were going to do this the, the surgery uh, this and that other valve that, that's like i said that's open what they want to do is they want to snip some where it's attaching to the heart they want to snip some of that so that hopefully it helps it to close so that it properly open and close 
not being pulled open by the swelling of the heart. But it was gonna be very risky. My dad, my mom already prepared, prepared us. We already knew that my dad would not make it through that. But, you know, my father wanted to go through with it. Um, my mom was respecting him. We're respecting what he wants. So we came all the way to San Antonio only to be told that it's too risky, they're not gonna do anything. A long story because there was a lot of talk, a lot of kind of like hopes that were given to us and then kind of crushed within like 15 minutes of a little conversation with a nurse. She was supposed to have the doctor, she was supposed to call me within the next two weeks after that, let me know yes or no or what. They finally decided, even though she was basically telling us it's not gonna happen. They never called me. My dad ended up in the hospital again, but in Harlingen, I told my mom, we're not driving all the way to San Antonio, just to find out that, you know, he has to be put in the hospital for two weeks because of his sleep. They're doing a good job here in our city of taking care of that. So as long as he's not, we're not going because they are going to do a procedure, we're not going to San Antonio. And I told her, and if we do end up going to San Antonio for the other follow-up, and then they say, oh, we got to put him in the hospital because, again, you know, his fluids, we're going to say, no, we're driving him home and we'll put him in the hospital over there. So that was a decision also that my mom and I had already made that we were going to do. But anyway, I ended up canceling that that appointment, the, another appointment, you know, that we had been go, going to after the one that they told us they just weren't going to do it because my mom had to put him in the hospital again. This time the doctor says, okay, I'm going to talk to another doctor. He's in Corpus. He's very intelligent. He's very smart. He's a specialist. He knows what he's doing. Blah, and then he looked at my dad's chart, so that is the testing, and he said, yes. He, he came to Harlingen. He came to see him. He said, yes, I can do the surgery. We're going to send him to the hospital in Corpus. We're going to transfer him over there by ambulance. So here we are driving this on, on a Sunday. This is on Sunday. Um, we know they're going to transfer him over to Corpus. My mom's, my mom goes home for a little bit because the good thing about my dad staying in Harlingen is that she can stay overnight with him, but then she can go home during the day and do all the things that she needs to do. She can drive around. She's got her car, but she can do whatever she needs to do. So it was a lot easier on my mom as well. You know, being in San Antonio, she couldn't do any of that. She had to stay in the hospital the whole time. She didn't have a car to go anywhere. Even if she did, she wouldn't even dare to go anywhere. She wouldn't need me. So she just stayed there until I came back to see them and helped her with whatever she needed. But anyway, um, back to the future here now she gets told okay we're gonna take him on Sunday and so my mom comes home she starts you know getting her stuff and I told my mom make sure you pack him back for a few days don't just pack for overnight whatever so my husband and I are like ready okay tell us what time so they tell they call her back and they tell her okay we're gonna go to transfer him now it was already like three o'clock getting close to three o'clock and my, then my mom tells her, okay, well, then I'm heading back to the hospital, and we're just going to follow the ambulance. But whomever she's spoken to, she says a nurse, tells her, no, don't even bother coming back to the hospital, because he's already going to get put in the ambulance. There's no sense in you coming up here. He's not going to be in the room, blah, 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 blah. You just go ahead and drive on. Go ahead and take off to, to Corpus, and you can get there a little bit before he does, and, you know, just be ready. Be there waiting. So my mom calls myself and my husband. And we're like, yeah, okay, we're coming to get you. 3.30, we're taking off. Five o'clock, we're almost getting close to Corpus. Corpus is only a couple of hours from where we live rather than three and a half, you know, three, three and 45, you know, having to go to San Antonio. Five o'clock, my dad calls us, says, hey, where are you guys at? And my mom's like, well, we're on our way to Corpus. Where are you at? should be on your way and he's like no I'm still here in Arlington nobody's come for me they said not till 7 p.m. because they need a special paramedic to be in the ambulance with me and he doesn't not available till 7 o'clock so we're waiting on that so we're almost you know getting close to Corpus here 5 o'clock and we're like what 7 o'clock so we're like okay I guess we're just gonna have to get there and I said well I'm just gonna get a hotel that has room for my mom also because it from the looks of it, she's not going to be able to stay in the hospital. My mom's like, yeah, they should let me. And I'm like, no, mom, by the time they get them over your visiting hours will be over. Quick short story, we get to San, we get to Corpus, we call the hospital, we get to the hospital, we park outside and we call them up and say, hey, look, here's the situation. My dad's supposed to be, be bring, brought up here 
He's already got a room number. We tell him all the, we give him all the information. They verified, yes, everything is, the room is ready for him. But they have not left Harlingen. They have not left Harlingen as far as we know. And they said visiting hours are going to be over. Your mom's not going to be able to come up here tonight. You're going to have to wait till the morning. After that, we'll see. And then she might she be able to stay here. She might be able to stay with him in here in the hospital. But once he has a procedure done, he might be in ICU. He won't be able to stay. She won't be able to stay in there. You'll have to make accommodations for her or whatever. You go home, drive back, whatever you need to do. That's that's all we can do. Okay, fine. So we get a hotel. Eight o'clock. My dad calls. Where are you? My mom's like, we're in Corpus. Or we already told you. He says, you know, my, fa my father forgets that. My father's like, oh, I thought you were going to come over here. I'm waiting over here. They still haven't taken me anywhere. It doesn't look like I'm going to be going anywhere tonight. So we're over here in Corpus going, what? We're over here because this lady told us that we should just go ahead and head on over here. We got a hotel for the night, paid for nothing. Well, we could have just waited for the morning, regardless of when, if they bring him overnight, in the middle of the night or what. But if we can't go in the hospital anyway, what's the point of being here? We had gone to dinner and everything. And, and, you know, we got to, so it was at 8, eight o'clock and we're very, very upset. My mom's like, my dad, my, you know, thinking about my dad because he tells her, I want you here by my side. You know, he started to make her feel guilty and bad and everything. She says, it's not her fault. You know, they told her to go ahead and just head on over here. Otherwise, she could have been there with him. And we could have, you know, taken off to go pick her up whatever moment they decide that they're bringing him down because that was the idea the moment that they were bringing him down to transfer him and get him out of the room my mom knew she was going to need to get out of the room that's what she was going to call us and we were going to go get her at the hospital follow the ambulance but that got ruined because we got told just go ahead and leave and then here we are in corpus my dad's not even here so 11 o'clock comes along and he makes a call and he goes well they finally brought me and i'm here like great but I can't see you till the morning so we'll see you in the morning we go there in the morning we see my dad we visit him for a little visit him I took a little picture of him um, maybe I'll post it here um, the ICU nurse comes in and she says well he's not looking too good the procedures was scheduled for Tuesday which is gonna be the next day right this is already Monday morning because we took off on Sunday we were there Monday morning Tuesday. We were told Tuesday. And she says, it doesn't look like it. We're going to prepare him anyway. After midnight, don't eat anything, blah, 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 stuff. You know, the instructions. Um, and she tells my mom, you know, you can stay here, obviously, as long as he's in this room. But once he goes has his procedure, you're going to have to leave the room because we have to check him out of this room and then put him in ICU. And I don't know how long he's going to be in ICU. Is it a day or two or hours or, you know, days, whatever. So we already knew this. The plan was when my dad had the procedure, we were all going to drive again back over here. We, well, we were thinking it was going to be on Tuesday, so we were going to stay another night and just be there, right? Until we knew what was happening. And then we could drive back home, put my mom in a hotel. I could stay in a hotel with her. I was going to drive back home, drop off my husband, come back, stay with my mom in the hotel. Half a mile, keep left. Okay, so um, this is so confusing. You just keep left, you just say exit. Keep left to continue on US 77. Keep left, I'm keeping left, not right. Okay, anyway, um, that's probably why she was telling me so I wouldn't continue for 17 miles. So I wouldn't get off on this exit. Anyway, so, so I have no idea when to stop recording, you guys. We ended up talking to my mom and we decided that, you know, she says, go ahead and go home because they're not going to do the procedure on Tuesday after all. Um, I will call you and I told my mom, you can call me for whatever reason and I won't head over here until he is being taken out of the room. You're gonna have you're gonna be asked to leave, get your bag, and just go down to the waiting room. You can sit there. And it just takes me two hours to get here, Mom. Whatever, three hours, give me a chance to get, you know, dressed, get my stuff ready and all this stuff, gas, whatever I have to do. 
I guess in my car right away as soon as we got on my, I filled it up and had it ready. So my car's been ready. I've been ready. So Wednesday comes, I think my mom's, my mom and I are talking, she says, they're saying Thursday, me, Thursday. And I'm like, oh my gosh, here we go again. They're playing ping pong with my dad, back and forth, here and there. We're going to do it, we're not going to do it. This and that. But okay, Thursday, mom. Again, call me when it's it's actually happening. But she's crying because she's in pain and her right side is hurting. Her right leg is getting numb. She can't walk around. She's got to grab the walker that they have in the room for my dad. So now, listen, this is the, this is the, 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 the conditions for my mom to be able to stay there overnight is if she could do things on her own and she doesn't need any kind of help or any kind of assistance. You know, she's not using any, you know, items to help her or do anything she can do things on her own and we said yes of course she can do it. those things she's, she's capable of all those things she's she'll even help my dad do things but now this is happening to her and she can't do anything she's got to grab my dad's walker when they're not watching her because she's afraid they're going to tell her ma'am if you can't do this you can't be in the room we're going to have to put you in the hospital now or something so she's all fearful she's crying and, and, and i'm over here in orange and i'm like mom let me go get you let me go over there let me do something whatever i have to do we're gonna do it but she's like no give me another night you can come tomorrow so then she calls me late at night and she tells me guess what they just told me they're not going to do the procedure it's too risky i don't know what to do please come get me so here i am i'm on my way to corpus to get my mom whatever we also talked about some other things we don't know that's gonna happen i don't even want to talk about it right now because i don't know what's going on until i get there but it's just been like that with my dad so i want to thank everybody for your prayers and your thoughts and your beautiful words and your encouragement it's, did i say it was getting cold it's 54 degrees right here or it's at least inside the car for us that's cold you guys we call it a cool front but you know so thank you very much to all of you and I just wanted to tell you what's going on and I do uh, leave uh, information on my community page but I don't know if everybody sees it or what or I don't know it seems like it gets to be kind of a long letter in there because I added some stuff to it I was so mad yesterday I was so upset mad angry sad all kinds of confusion feelings and all that But if you're subscribed and you hit the notification bell, you should be getting those not notifications of the uh, on my on my posts. The community page is uh, uh, where you can go onto somebody's channel and you'll see that it says community. You can click on that and you can see posts there. Those are posts without having to do a video, just, just a little note of some sort of or another. You can post a picture there and people can comment on that as well. It's kind of like leaving a Facebook post and people, you know, commenting on it. But anyway, I just want to thank you. Thank you all very much. Um, all, all the words that you say mean a lot to me. Um, I don't I don't share things with anybody ever, so now I'm doing this sharing. So uh, it's it's kind of a different thing to, to actually share something that you're going through and then actually get some feedback. I've always just been somebody who just kept everything inside of me locked up inside of me so this actually does help so i want to apologize to those of you who are maybe looking for craft videos or recipe videos and you come across this and you're like what is this i don't want to i don't want to see this i don't want to see some lady crying on a video or whatever about her, her personal problems so i want to apologize to you of course you didn't have to watch all this but if you did thank you for at least doing that um and again to all of all of you who do expect uh, videos from me and I was supposed to be starting my Christmas videos I already had some things a couple of things in mind I had an idea I went to Dollar Tree and they had a four foot tree they have a three dollar five dollar section and this is a five dollar four foot tree I haven't even looked at it yet it's still in the packaging everything still I had an idea what I was going to do with that and that was supposed to have been on Monday you were supposed to already have that video and then I decided okay they'll have it for Thursday which would have been today and I didn't get to do it and I'm really very sorry but thank you all again um, uh, I'm not even gonna give myself a thumbs up but if you're inclined you know the drill I love you all very much
Thank you for watching. God bless.